I guess I should preface this first video with saying I'm just concerned about the precedent this is setting, that allegations or any kind of controversy can come out against somebody's name, and that could derail them from processes, key political processes, or something like that. That's really what I'm looking at this from. Really, whether Kavanaugh is nominated or not, there's still going to be a problem here. There's still going to be the issue of this manifesting itself in the civilian world with uh, employers and, and society and culture. That's what we really have to be looking at here. So don't think of this as a, I am for Kavanaugh, or I am against Kavanaugh, or I am for his accusers, against his accusers. I think sexual allegations should be taken seriously and needs to be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis, especially something like this. That being said, what I do think of Kavanaugh personally is uh, his record isn't over-exemplary, really. It's not overwhelming, and it's not underwhelming either. I mean, really, I do believe that this is your regular run-of-the-mill uh, conservative judge, middle of the road, that would have made it through without much uh, controversy or drama had he not been elected by Trump. I'm not attributing all this madness solely to Trump, but I, I think had these allegations not come out, I think had Trump not elected this, this individual and had these allegations not come out, this guy would have just made it right past, flew over most people's radar, um, honestly. His record does go back to 2002, as far as I know. It, that is public, and you can go out and check that for yourself if you have a question about his actual record. Um, so if I'm speaking about that, his record is neither extraordinary, exemplary, or underwhelming as well. So that being said, let's go ahead and continue with the video. So I basically hinted in my last Kavanaugh video that it would be my last Kavanaugh video, but obviously it's not, right? Here we are. So much for that. I've lost subscribers over this, but that's because not everyone can handle objectivity. It's important. When I hear sexual assault allegations, my first instinct are not to believe. That immediately condemns a potentially innocent party. My first instinct is to carefully approach the matter in a deliberate and investigative tone. But this latest accusation has probably got to be the worst case scenario for the alleged victim, Julie Swetnick. And let me just make a quick statement. Typically when I do these things, I first go online and read forums and articles and other things before I go to the mainstream news outlets. Um, that is good and bad is and I don't get fed the propaganda that comes from the news media. I'm able to discern it much easier when I'm reading it. Uh, the problem with that is I don't often know how to pronounce the names. So I'll pronounce a name one way and then when I go to upload a video with the person's name in it to give a visual for the individuals watching, then I come to find out that I've been pronouncing the name wrong the whole time. So I'm sorry. Julie Swetnick claims to have been witness to Kavanaugh repeatedly acting inappropriate towards women. She says she's witnessed Mark Judge, Kavanaugh's friend, and Kavanaugh perpetuates sexual acts with multiple boys against the same intoxicated teenage girls. Okay, really, this isn't going to work. Look, I have to say it how it is. The latest person has damning testimony, not to Kavanaugh, but to herself. Swetnick is basically testifying to being witness to Kavanaugh's participation in gang rape more than one time. She says she's been to 10 plus parties where several similar activities were taking place. Too bad she didn't think to protect some of these girls who were allegedly raped with impunity at these parties she continued to frequent despite the activities, making her an accessory, right? Not only did she stand back and allow her peers to be repeatedly brutally victimized and raped while she did nothing, she became a victim herself according to her, but continued to attend these proceedings to witness Kavanaugh's alleged behavior. Wow. It begs the question. If she did witness any of these assaults happen, why continue to go to these parties? Why not say anything before you became a victim? Why not say something on behalf of the other victims? She says she was gang raped herself by multiple boys, but only named the two who have been appearing in the news. Does she not bear any of the weight for remaining silent while her peers were gang raped with impunity as she watched? I don't think I'd be coming out as a victim admitting I've seen other people victimized, but refuse to say anything. I get why sexual assault victims take so long to come out, but if you weren't the victim, why not speak out about somebody else who is? That's sad. Anyway, I'm going to end it here. I think that this is getting ridiculous.